Hi, I'm Nathan. Hi, I'm Ewan, and we are part of the Fortuna Peace team at Indigo. When designing our robot, the team decided to create a cycle design rather than a lift design. This allowed the robot to cycle through the enemy color out and the ally color in efficiently. For our chassis, we decided to use Omniwheels so that we could minimize the amount of turning. Since turning takes time, Omniwheels at a 45 degree angle made it possible to straighten instead. This is our robot. The major sensors we had is the vision sensor right here, the inertial sensor below this mesh, and the ultrasonic sensor right beside it. Uh, the sensors are mounted to help improve the robot's autonomy and accuracy. The inertial sensor measures acceleration and rotation. Absolute rotation is rotation independent of any external reference. For example, when we tell our robot to go 45 degrees, that 45 degrees will always be in the same direction regardless of where it may be previously be facing. The reason that we need an inertial sensor is for accuracy and consistency. Without the help of the sensor, each time the robot turned, its rotation would be slightly different than intended. Custom rotate function. It takes in two values, the absolute degree to rotate to and the speed value. First, it determines whether turning right or left is faster. Next, if the distance to the target is greater than 30 degrees, it will spin at the given speed towards the target and update the difference variable. If the initial difference is less than 30 degrees, it will skip the previous step. When the robot is 30 degrees or less from the target, it will continue turning at 10% of the original speed until it reaches the target. The inertial sensor is also used to correct drift in the custom-made strafe and move functions, providing even more accuracy to our custom odometry system without tracking wheels. The next sensor is the ultrasonic rangefinder. Its main purpose is to measure distances. The way this device works is that it emits a high frequency sound wave that alerts the bot of obstacles in its path. We use this sensor to detect the walls of the field and to assist the strafing of the robot. Strafe function. This takes in three values, the distance in inches, the speed, and which side sensor to use. First, it determines whether the robot should strafe right or left. Then using the given sensor side, it will strafe to the given distance using the custom-made move strafe function. While strafing, it will also use the inertial sensor to correct any drift. Lastly, when it's almost at the target, it will accelerate fast in the opposite direction, so that the robot stops exactly at the target. With a combination of the ultrasonic and inertial sensor, we are able to make a self-correcting system, while all the extra parts and space needed for an odometry system. The vision sensor is essentially a camera. It's over here and it's capable of detecting up to seven colors at once, including multicolored objects. We've chosen to use this for two purposes. One, to intake balls with our intakes, and the other one to sort out balls using our limit switch and the vision sensor together. To detect um, our X and Y coordinates for the center of the object, we have to get the coordinates of the two opposite diagonal corners of our object and then run the midpoint theorem to find the center. Um, since the camera is not able to detect depth or z coordinate, we have to use an equation to detect relative depth as compared to the size of the object in front of it. Custom ball sorting function that takes in two values, how long it should run for, and the color to sort out. First, it initializes the start time, current time, and duration variables to be used later. Then it uses a while loop to keep the code running while it's been running for less time than the given total time. Inside the while loop, it first checks if the Q, or how many balls of the color to X take, are currently in the robot. If there are none, and the vision sensor detects that the color, then it will add 1 to the Q. Next, if the Q is equal to 1, it will check if the limit switch is being pressed. If so, it will X take the ball from the back. Lastly, it updates the current time and the duration of the function has been running, and keeps on looping. 